and that is the potential for a ruinous war destroying Damascus, Syria. I think it is very plausible that we could see in the year 2010 this prophecy being fulfilled. What prophecy? It's in the prophecy that we find in the book of Isaiah. Some of you, maybe most of you, are familiar with this. We've talked about this on numerous occasions, but it's been brought back to the forefront with uh, recent breaking news. Isaiah the prophet, and you can turn there if you want, in chapter 17, verse 1, uh, <clears throat> records a very interesting prophecy about Damascus, which is the capital of Syria. Now, before I read the prophecy, I want to share with you something that you may or may not be aware of. Syria is a proxy of Iran. Hezbollah and Hamas are proxies of Iran vis-a-vis -vis Syria. The way I like to illustrate it, and you've heard this illustration before, is Iran is the arm that moves the hand, Syria is the hand that moves the fingers, and the fingers are Hamas, Hezbollah, and all of these terrorist organizations that are literally hell-bent on the destruction of Israel for the purpose of, and we saw this prophecy as well, wiping Israel off the map so that, like Psalm 83 says, they are a nation no more. Now, with that in mind, Syria plays a huge role in the end times prophetic program. Enter Isaiah. The burden against Damascus. Listen to the words that he uses in describing this prophetic event that will take place with respect to Damascus. He says, Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a, watch this word, ruinous heap. Ruinous heap. Other translations will render it a heap of rubble. In other words, Damascus, the oldest city in the world, is going to be reduced to a ruinous heap of rubble. Something's going to happen, uh, a preemptive strike against Syria by likely Israel, and Damascus will be destroyed. This prophecy hasn't been fulfilled yet. Interesting, yesterday, just yesterday in the Jerusalem Post, listen to this headline, Syria warns next war will be ruinous. Ruinous? Ruinous. Did these people get up in the morning and read the Bible and think, oh my, we better get busy. Uh, <laughs> we're supposed to be reduced to a ruinous heap. Exactly as the prophet Isaiah said. Exactly as God's word records. Here's an excerpt from this article. Syrian prime minister says, if future conflict erupts, it will affect the region and beyond. Syrian Prime Minister Naji al Atari on Saturday warned Israel that any new Mideast war would be catastrophic for the region and beyond. Syria's Foreign Minister warned Israel earlier this month that any new war would reach Israeli cities to which Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman responded that the Syrian army would be defeated and its regime would collapse in any future conflict. That's Isaiah 17.1. Isaiah 17.1 is in the Jerusalem Post on Saturday, February 20th, almost to the exact word. God's word says it, and that settles it. It's just a matter of time before it happens. Now, whenever I talk about this prophecy, I always get emails. Not from you. You guys are great. You don't ever email me. 
Even when I mess up, you know, grammatically or my sentence structure, which I have no sentence structure, but <laughs> whenever I mess up or I misspell something or I just say something wrong, you guys are so gracious to me. You know, you don't correct me in front of everybody. Thank you for that. You wait till afterwards and you rebuke me and thank you for that. <laughs> But here's the point, and I do have one. I'll always get an email from somebody that will say, why do you prophecy teachers regurgitate everybody's teaching? Oh, well, excuse me. What do you mean, Richard? <laughs> I always get defensive. It's uh, the flesh. And, uh, you know, I get in the flesh, and it's kind of like, what are you doing? Do, 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 you know, who are you anyway? Well, they'll see me on YouTube, and they'll, they'll watch this, you know, prophecy update on YouTube, or sometimes locally here, they'll, they'll see it on Olelo on TV. And they'll comment on it. I get about one a week now. I'll, I'll get somebody calling in, and I had this uh, one lady just two weeks ago. I don't know which prophecy update she watched, but she called in, left a message on the voicemail, and said something to the effect of the following How do you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning? Oh, really? <laughs> you are in grave danger. <laughs> you don't threaten me. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Palestinian flashback. <laughs> but see, this, this one uh, email was from this one lady, and she said, you're just regurgitating everything that you see or hear from other, other prophecy teachers. How do you know that Isaiah 17:1 is going to be fulfilled by an Israeli attack on Syria? I mean, how do you know that it's not going to be an earthquake that reduces them to a... Uh, ruinous heap. I didn't email her back. Uh, maybe I should have, but I just didn't. I didn't bother because it seems like that sometimes people aren't looking for an answer, they're looking for an argument. So I, I just kind of discern, you know, I'll, I'll pray about every kind of response, even if it's threatening. You know, Lord, what would you like me to do with this? <laughs> Go run for your life and hide like Elijah. Jezebel's on the phone. She's going <laughs> to... And I didn't respond, and here's why. Listen, if it's because we are repeating what other prophecy teachers are repeating, it's because we're tuned to the same fork. We're tuned to the same fork. You know, whenever Frank Toyama and I talk, it's kind of interesting because he'll share with me some of the things that he's been, you know, teaching on or the Lord's been ministering to him about. And I'll say, wow, that's exactly what God's been, you know, putting on my heart as well. But why? Because we're of one mind and one accord. In other words, the tuning fork of God's word is that which we are tuned to and tuned by so that we're in tune, we're in unison, 